What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. So, uh, per usual, we're going to do our stock market expected moves for the week. And this is a very curious week, too. We do have Powell talking this week. Then next week, we do have CPI. So, we'll finally get uh, like a resolution as to uh, was this. So, uh, here's the S&P right here in the back. Uh, this is something I'm going to be talking about on, on the Don Front Show. If you're new here, this is Don Front Trading, all pre-recorded stuff. Uh, but then there's Don Front Show, where I go live. I do encourage you to subscribe there, because that's... One of the only things you need to do to just jump in the live chat, and that's I like to answer questions, do stuff like that. Uh, but there is a, a show Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be going over just kind of my thoughts and everything again. Is like, was this a bull market with a, a pullback to here, or is this the start of a new downtrend? And this is really the dip buy for puts. So I'm going to go over that right now. We jumped up into a zone. We we found a red candle. Futures did open red today. Uh, but these blue zones, I call them speed bump zones for a reason. If I'm going to see uh, an opposing force, it's likely going to be there. I'm not really worried. Like if I'm bullish right now and I see red, then I'm not too terribly concerned. I'm thinking if we base out here, I might even add on. So that being said, let's go over the expected moves because we went for it. First of all, if we go to the daily, that ultimately that yellow zone did hold. Uh, you can go to any time frame you want, change the story however you want, but I draw these yellow zones on the daily this the, the blue are drawn on the hourly uh gray also daily uh typically yellow but it was just too much yellow on on the chart uh anyway that zone held we talked about this being a, a bull market and things still looking good and then it went for it. it really did uh driven from hedging from zero days expiration there's a lot of theories about that there's a lot going on but honestly if we run it up into CPI, I'm going short. For now, I I, I did swing short over the weekend. I, I do think we are a little bit overbought. Uh, again, more stuff I'm going to talk about on, on the Don Front show. Uh, but for now, if I'm bullish, I just want to pull back to this gray zone, and I want that to hold. Uh, so let's let's chart some things out, see what we got, see what the market makers are going. Let's bring up TOS. Uh, all right, so Tesla, 1304. Spy, we got 785. QQQ 784, easy enough to remember. IWM 442, let's rock and roll. What was Tesla? <laughs> the Qs are inspired, easy to remember this week. ADD's kicking in strong. 1304, I was thinking 17. All right, 1304. Hope Spy melts down. Breakdown. I deleted these so many times. Uh, delete that too. So thirteen oh four puts us right into that upper zone. So we're expecting to hit that zone this week. Or basically, we're hitting one of these zones. We're expected to stay inside these two and maybe play a little game ping pong. We can bounce back and forth between zone to zone all week. Monday we can be here. Tuesday we can be here. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and all be inside uh, the expected moves. So market makers have everything ahead and accounted for. If that were to pan out, you know, if we end the week down here, I'd say the trend down is here. But if we just stay inside here, like that, that's just sideways for Tesla. Uh, so uh, when, when the market gets like this, I think a lot of people get antsy. They start making moves because... While it goes sideways, they're taking a news article after news article after news article. That's why I don't watch it or care for it. Uh, but then they start making moves that are unnecessary. Like, let them show you their cards first and then make your move. Uh, you know, if you, if you think you're going to be bearish or bullish, take that play. You know where the stops are, you know, regardless when it's, when it's sideways. Uh, but as far as, like, adding on or even getting out, like, chill. Let them do something first. Let them make the first move, and then we'll call it a day. All right, Spy was 785. Ran it right to the expected move last week on a Friday. Really? Mm. 
Very interesting with, with Powell speaking. Let's do just one more in case we get an actual breakdown. That way it's already on there. Because Powell comes out and spooks the market and really just wrecks things. We'll be outside. I'd like to have this on my chart already because once we... I don't really care anything inside here. You know, normal, normal trading. Get outside here. I like to sell um, puts outside. Even calls here. We get outside to the two. We get outside one standard deviation. Uh, the two standard deviation stuff is just jacked up. It's pumped up. Uh, so I like to just sell that premium because it's just not likely we go for that three spot. Uh, so playing the numbers game uh, just kind of puts the numbers in your favor. So I do like that one. QQQ was one penny off, 784. be two pennies off again it's not support and resistance but you will watch how things interact at these levels uh, does not mean buy there this is these are not buy or sell levels or anything like that like I said if anything I like it I don't really care until we get outside these moves uh, or like if I'm selling options. anytime I'm selling options it's outside here for the week uh, but when I sell options I don't chase there's no such thing as a home run when you're selling options you know I'd rather collect a few bucks less uh, and not have to worry about management than anything else. I'm sure that the trend line down is broken. Ah, it's not broken, as a matter of fact. If you're thinking this is your peak, here's your next peak. I wouldn't call that a peak. We kind of just based out. This could be your next peak, and what is that? Still a lower high. So no real reason to pop bottles there. Expected move was 442. Now, we hit that, then yeah, I'd say that trend down is broken. Again, I'm not, I don't have a bullish or a bearish bias. I have an income bias. So I do what makes sense for my wallet. Uh, I don't really care if the sky is falling or not, as long as there's a tradable event around it. Sweet. Uh, I make money on movement, not your opinion or the news article that came out that you can't wait to tell me about. Anyway, so there you have it. There's our expected moves for the week. Uh, so if we were to even hit the downside, IWM holding sideways, but still actually kind of looks good the, the Russell's holding up pretty strong as far as cues we hit to the downside I would worry that's a lower high coming in I really would and I would think maybe uh, hopefully you guys have some hedges in place I know a lot of people love talking about October lows and that that's low like we're a pretty far off from October lows like so if we hit October lows again like how's your account gonna be feeling you know how are you gonna be feeling so stop talking about October lows unless you really want to get there and find out uh, not that you're gonna speak it into existence or anything like that but we're not there. Well, we're here now. Uh, that's all we can do is talk about here. Do you think it's going up? Do you think it's going down? I don't care if it's going to a million or zero. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there and we start traveling. For now, what's the next move? It's gonna That next candle is going to be red or green. Which one is it? Uh, so anyway, I'll wrap it up here. Hopefully, I'll see you guys on the Don Fran Show. Have a good one.